name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I welcome you all to this morning worship service and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May God be with us and bless us all. Let us worship God, God is Spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us praise God by singing the hymn number 338, 338 from the Book of Common Praise, My God, accept my heart this day. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I will arise and go to my Father, and I will say to Him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your Son. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Let us kneel down and examine ourselves in silence. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. O God, our Father, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and we have not loved you with all our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Have mercy upon us. 
we ask you cleanse us from our sins and help us to overcome our faults through jesus christ our lord amen may the almighty and merciful lord grant unto us pardon and remission of all our sins time for amendment of life and grace and comfort of the holy spirit amen please be seated let us listen to the scripture lessons the first lesson will be read reading from genesis verses 1 to 9 genesis verses 1 to 9 now the whole earth had one language and the same words and as they migrated from the east they came upon a plain in the land of shinar and settled there and they said to one another come let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly and they had bricks for stone and bitumen for mortar then they said come let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves otherwise we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth the lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built and the lord said look they are one people and they have all one language and this is only the beginning of what they will do nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them come let us go down and confuse their language there so that they will not understand one another's speech so the lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth and they left off building the city therefore it it was called babel because there the lord confused the language of all the earth and from there the lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth thanks be to o god the second lesson will be read today's reading second timothy chapter 2 verses 14 to 26 second timothy chapter 2 14 to 26 remind them of this and warn them before god that they are to avoid wrangling over words which does no good but only ruins those who are listening do your best to present yourself to god as one approved by him a worker who has no need to be ashamed rightly explaining the word of truth avoid profane chatter from it will lead into more and more empathy and their talk will spread like gangrene among them are hymenius and philetius who have swerved from the truth by claiming that the resurrection has already taken place they are upsetting the faith of some but god's firm foundation stands bearing this inscription the lord knows who are his and let every one who calls on the name of the lord turn away from wickedness in a large house there are utensils not only of gold and silver but also wood and clay some for special use some for ordinary all who cleanse themselves of the things i have mentioned will become special utensils dedicated and useful to the owner of the house ready for every good work shun youthful passions and pursue righteousness faith love and peace along with those who call on the lord from a pure heart have nothing to do with stupid and senseless controversies you know that they breed quarrels and the lord's servant must not be quarrelsome but kindly to everyone an apt teacher patient correcting opponents with gentleness god may perhaps grant they will repent and come to know the truth and that they may escape from the snare of the devil having been held captive 
by him to do his will. Let us all stand and listen to the gospel lesson. The gospel reading is taken from the gospel according to Saint Matthew, chapter 5, verses 38 to 48. Matthew, chapter 5, beginning at 38. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. If anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you, and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and son sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Friends, once again I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Today, our nation celebrates the Independence Day. According to our diocesan lectionary, the theme given for our meditation today is communal harmony. As we celebrate another Independence Day of our nation, we gratefully remember Mahatma Gandhi, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, and others who had contributed to making India a free nation. We need to ask ourselves the question whether we really enjoy freedom in the strict sense of the term as envisaged by the founding fathers of our nation. In a situation of increasing poverty, caste conflicts, religious fundamentalism, communal disharmony, etc. How is it possible for us to call ourselves as free? We need to envision a real free India and work towards the same in our own small ways, eradicating all the ills that divide humankind and co cause communal tensions. We need to tile hard for communal harmony in our nation. In a country like ours, where there is such a variety of religious traditions and faiths, which advocate basically respect and love for all, it is sad that we still have not been able to practice these basic tenets of our faiths. Our Lord has been very conscious of building up a community where there is love and dignity for all, irrespective of caste, creed, sex or religion. The Gospel passage points out certain principles that we need to cultivate in our lives to build communities of peace and harmony. A community of harmony has been envisioned in the Bible and by other leaders of repute. In the biblical records, the story of creation, the Exodus event, the legal courts, concepts such as the kingdom of God, new heaven and new earth, people of God, 
the Sermon on the Mount, etc., powerfully portray the biblical vision of the a community of peace and harmony. Mahatma Gandhi advocated a community of freedom. Martin Luther King Jr. walked for a community of equal rights for all. The great leader Nelson Mandela dreamt of a community beyond apartheid. The gospel text for today is part of the Sermon on the Mount where we can discern certain principles that are necessary for the building up of a community of harmony. There is a praise repeated often in the sermon. You have heard it said, but now I say this to you, implying a radical reversal of values to pave the way for a community of harmony. First of all, there is the principle of non-retaliation. The text says, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist one who is evil. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Jesus cites the oldest law in the world, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. This law is known as the Lex Telionis, that is the law of retaliation, Lex Telionis. It appears in the earliest known code of laws, the code of Hammurabi. This law became later part and parcel of the ethics of the Old Testament that we read in Exodus chapter 21 verses 23 to 25, Leviticus chapter 24, verse 19 and 20, and then Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 21. Although this law sounds as a law of tit for tat, its original intention was definitely limitation of vengeance, definitely limitation of vengeance. Because of the severity of the punishment, that intended desire was that this law will deliberately prevent people from doing vengeance. It is also to be noted that this law was never a law which gave a private individual the right to extract vengeance. Rather, it was always a law which served as a guide for a judge in the court of law to assess punishment and penalty. It is also important for us to realize that this law was never literally carried out and also the fact that this law is by no means the whole of Old Testament ethics. There are definite indications of mercy in the Old Testament where we read from Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18, Proverbs chapter 21 verse 21, 20, Proverbs chapter 25 verse 21, and Proverbs chapter 24 verse 29 and Book of Lamentations chapter 3 verse 30 and so on. Jesus, however, obliterated the very principle of that law because retaliation has no place in the community envisaged by Jesus. Retaliation no, has no place in the community envisaged by Jesus. He talks about three practical examples to highlight the importance of non-retaliation in our community living. Jesus says, if anyone smites us on the right cheek, we must turn to him the other cheek also. Jesus also says that if anyone tries to take away our tunic in a lawsuit, we must not only let him have that, but must offer him our clock also. Jesus goes on to say, if one is compelled to go one mile, we should be prepared to go two miles. If we take these examples literally, we will completely miss the point. What Jesus is trying to advocate is that non-retaliation is an important principle 
in community living and then only we can build up a community of harmony. Non-retaliation is an important principle in community living and then only we can build up a community of harmony. In the church, when the service was going on, two little brothers were bursting with a lot of enthusiasm in the church. But when the preacher started preaching on the topic, turning the other cheek when someone hits at us, the boys attentively followed the sermon with undivided attention. The preacher said, no matter what harm others might do to us, we must not return evil for evil. We must not try to get even with our enemies. In the evening, one of the boys came home crying, and between his sobs, noisy cry, he said to his mother that he had kicked his brother, and he kicked him back. Then the mother tried to console him and said to him, You should not go around kicking others. The tear-filled boy replied, But the preacher said, He was not supposed to kick me back. In the Old Testament, the commandment was that an injured person might life lawfully insist an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But the New Testament commandment taught by our Lord is, we must not be revengeful. Jesus very clearly prohibits his followers from taking revenge, from demanding an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. We may lawfully protect ourselves and our family against the evil of our enemies, but we must not carry a grudge, take revenge and try to get even with our enemies. We must go beyond our enemies and forgive them. Even pray for those who persecute us. Three things Jesus specified. First, if someone strikes us on one cheek, we are to turn the other. Striking on the cheek inflicts not only a physical injury, but also an affront or offense. We are to bear it patiently and not pick quarrel with him. Let the Lord in heaven and the magistrates of the states avenge the injustice, but we are not to retaliate. If someone wants to take away our coat by suing us in the court, let him have it and the cloak as well. He may take an oath falsely in the court and claim our coat. We, the disciples of Jesus, are not to sue him in the court and waste our time and money on small matters. We can always buy a new coat instead of spending money in suing him. If someone forces us to travel with them one mile, we must be willing to travel two miles. It is said that the disciples of famous rabbis and the students of the law must not be forced by the king's officers to travel on public services. The disciples of Jesus are not to be exempted from the public services and they are not to antagonize the government. They must not insist upon their rights. In small matters, Christians must not waste their time and money in retaliating or insisting upon our rights. If peace, if peace could be purchased with these little inconveniences and deprivations, then it must be pursued. We must love those who hurt us. It is not enough that we don't retaliate, but we must go a little further and give our enemies our love and forgiveness. We must pray for them and wish them every good thing in life. Secondly, there is the principle of giving to the poor. In a human community, there is always the divide between the rich and the poor. Jesus admonishes that the poor in the community should be taken care of. Jesus says that we should liberally give to the poor. This principle of giving to the poor was based on 
Deuteronomy chapter 15 verses 11 to uh, verses 7 to 11 where different principles of giving are highlighted the point Jesus makes is that the poor and those who are in need should be taken care of and this is possible only by liberal giving from our means in a community of harmony nobody should feel unwanted or excluded a community of harmony is an exclusive community where the poor and the marginalized are taken care of thirdly there is the principle of love jesus makes again a radical reversal of an existing law he says you have heard it said you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy but i say to you love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you in friends in a multi-religious context like ours how important it is for us to work towards a community of harmony and peace if only we put into practice the principles laid down for us by our lord the principle of non-retaliation the principle of giving for the poor and the principle of love our community of harmony will definitely become a reality on this independence day let us pledge ourselves to work towards this noble cause of building up a community of harmony where there is respect and love for each other amen let us all stand and affirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed found on page number 56 of the prayer book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, guide our rulers and give them wisdom from above. Endue thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thy inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that ruleth the world but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray the collect for the day. Dear God, our Father and Mother, we thank you and praise you for the gift of life. We believe and affirm that you are the source and author of our life. You created us and the universe in order and harmony. Today we have lost our peace by creating walls between ourselves. We pray that you would break the barriers of division. Let the harmony and peace prevail among us. Enable us to understand that we are all created in the image of God and we all belong to one family of God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and ever. Amen. Let us pray the collect for peace. O oh God, who is the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal lives, 
who service his perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely trusting in your defense may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the collect for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run, run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance to do always that is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, let me publish the bands of marriage. I publish the bands of marriage between John Samuel Bachelor, son of late Mr. C. Silva Kumar and Mrs. Sweetie. Member of CSI in by Yesu Alayam, Thiruvathiyur Pastate, Diocese of Madras, and Judith and Alundra Spinster, Mr. daughter of Mr. T. Jayakumar and Mrs. D. Gladia Javamani, member of CSI in by Yesu Alayam, Thiruvathiyur Pastate, Diocese of Madras. If any of you know cause or just implement, why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it in writing to me. This is the third time of asking. I published the bands of marriage between Chris Wright John Singh, bachelor, son of Reverend J. Samuel Jabaraj, and Mrs. K. Esther Agusta Jayasili, member of CSI St. Thomas Tamil Church, San Thom, Diocese of Madras, and Jacqueline Marietta Spinster, daughter of Mr. B. Douglas Benjamin, and Mrs. S. Grace Kamalabai, member of CSI St. John's Church, Parambur Pastorate, Madras Diocese. If any of you know, cause or just implement why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it in writing to me. This is the third time of asking. I publish the bands of marriage between Yes, Asher Edward Prem Kumar, Bachelor, son of Reverend S. Sam Rajkumar and Mrs. Nalini Sam Rajkumar, member of CSI St. Michael's Church, Padi Pastate, Diocese of Madras, and S. Merlin Blessy Javamani, spinster, daughter of Mr. K. Sam Raj and Mrs. S. Agnes Sam Raj, member of CSI St. Michael's Church, Padi Pastate, Diocese of Madras. If any of you know cast or just impediment, why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it in writing to me. This is the third time of asking. I publish the bands of marriage between B. Donald Ivan, bachelor, son of Mr. Captain I. Balaratna Singh, and Mrs. Rani Elizabeth, member of CSI St. George's Cathedral, Diocese of Madras, and Kamalina Preeta, spinster, daughter of B. Samuel Sitaranjan, and Mrs. Shyamala Sitaranjan, member of CSI St. John's Church Fort, Diocese of Vellur. If any of you know cause or just impediment, why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it in writing to me. This is the third time of asking. I publish the bands of marriage between Sibet Philip Bachelor, 
son of Mr. S. Philip and Mrs. Catherine Philip, member of CSA Church of Jesus Christ, Palavakam Perungudi Pastate, Diocese of Madras, and Janice Rachel Sveda Jacob Spinster, daughter of Mr. S. Babu Kumar Jacob and Mrs. Pamela Jacob, member of CSA St. George's Cathedral, Diocese of Madras. If any of you know cause or just implement why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it in writing to me. This is the second time of asking. I published the bans of marriage between Mirari Bachelor, son of Mr. Barnabas Meribal Balasing, and Mrs. Malini Meribal, member of CSI Redeemer Church, Ananagar, Diocese of Madras, and R. K. E. Yukti Roshini, spinster daughter of Mr. Jacob Rajkumar and Mrs. Shobha Rajkumar, member of CSI St. George's Cathedral, Diocese of Madras. If any of you know cause or just impediment, why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it in writing to me. This is the first time of asking. Friends, as congregation we greet our brothers and sisters all those who are celebrating their birthdays as well as their wedding anniversary today and following days of this week as per the request of many congregation members i read out the names of uh, our brothers and sisters all those who are celebrating uh, their birthday and wedding anniversary in whole of this week On Sunday 15th, Mrs. Meena Koyil Pillai, Mrs. Ingrid Sabujon, Mrs. Jodi Asirvadam, Boris Andrews, Mr. Vijay Raju. On Monday 16th, Mrs. Rebecca Neltrop, Mr. Navin Lysander, Mrs. Pramila Barnes, Justice Inia Karunagaran, Mrs. Nyanamani Sundarraj, Mr. George Stephanus, P. Sunny Shane Milton, Dr. Ponisha Lloyd. Tuesday 17th, Kimberly Thompson, Mrs. Hyacinth Santinir, Mr. George Vergis, Mrs. Irish Norman, Dr. Amit Kumar Daniel, Noel Miranda, Susan Simon. Wednesday 18th, Mr. G. Lawrence, Mrs. Rosalind Parimala Dati, Mrs. Rosie Paul Ratnam, Mr. A. Theophilus, Mr. Thompson D. Srinivas, Mr. J. P. Pradeep Jayaprakash, Mrs. Sandra Taylor, Samuel Jesudas, Arav Jaden Prabhu. Thursday 19th, Captain Stanley Jesudasan, Mrs. Annette Kent, Mr. Preetam David Prabhakar, Mr. Daniel Manohar Raj, Ashita, da Ashita Diana Manohar, Mr. Kasari, Mr. Ritwik Jesudasan. Friday 20th, Mrs. Christine B. Neltrop, Mr. Keith Adrian Rigo, Mr. Daniel Augustus, Mr. S. Franklin Prabhu, Mr. Crispin Steve Ricky Mark, Mr. B. Sibylvan Pratish, Judah Sandeep Joshua. Saturday 21, Mr. Ronald W. Andrew, Mrs. Samburanam Manoharan, Mrs. Premalada Paul. Couples celebrating their wedding anniversary, Mrs. and Mr. Priya Pichamuthu on 16th Monday, on Tuesday 17th, Mrs. and Mr. Rafael Moses, Mrs. and Mr. Anbu Asar. Wednesday 18th, Mrs. and Mr. George Robinson, 
Mrs. and Mr. John Samuel Rajaratnam, Mrs. and Mr. Santosh Jacob, Mrs. and Mr. S. Franklin Prabhu, Dr. and Dr. Naveen Raja. Thursday 19th, Mrs. and Dr. Adi Sayaraj, Mrs. and Mr. Leslie Thomas, Mrs. and Mr. J. Atli, Mrs. and Mr. Solomon Prem Kumar, Mrs. and Mr. Shelton Victor. On Friday 20th, Mrs. and Mr. John Prashant Niranjan, Mrs. and Mr. Pradeep Daniel. On Saturday 21st, Mrs. and Mr. Harold Daniel, Mrs. and Mr. Matthew George Navin Kumar, Mrs. and Colonel S.S. Pondian, Mrs. and Mr. Samuel Paul. Friends, we greet all those who are celebrating their birthday and wedding anniversaries today and following days of this week. May God continue to bless you as you enter into a new year. Friends, I regret to announce that one of our church members, Mrs. Elizabeth Balasundaram, has entered into God's glory on 9th August 2021 due to post-COVID illness and complications. The burial service will take place today at 3 p.m. according to the COVID protocol. I request the congregation members to pray for the brood family members. Let us pray. Loving and gracious Father, we thank you for this new day. We thank you for you have enabled us to participate in this blessed service through online worship. Lord, we thank you for all the good things that you have bestowed upon us. Lord, we thank you for adding it another day to each one of us. We thank you for your mercies, which has no end. And we thank you for they are new every morning. Lord, this is the day that you have made for us. Help us to rejoice and be glad in it. Help us this day to please you in our thought, word and deed. Help us all through this day so to live that we may bring help to others. Credit to ourselves and to the name that we bear. And joy to those who love us and to you. Lord, give us this day the energy we need to face our walk. The diligence we need to do it well. Strengthen us to be witnesses for your son Jesus Christ at our home outside and in our workplace. Beautify each of us with the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Father, sustain us with this day's food and clothing. Let your blessings be on all our endeavors and efforts today. Heavenly Father, protect us and preserve us from dangers, accidents and disasters. Let your heavenly angels surround us always. Lord, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic time, we pray to you, Lord, for your protection, for your guidance, Lord, as the infection rate, uh, ratio is increasing, we commit, Lord, ourselves under your protection, under your wings, for you to protect us. Lord, we pray to you so that you remove this COVID-19 virus from the earth and redeem the earth from this disease. Lord, we also pray for all those who are infected and undergoing treatment in different hospitals. Lord, heal thy servants and grant them immediate miraculous healing so that they may be able to come and join with us to, to worship you, to praise you. Lord, at this time, we also remember the government servants, all the people, those who are serving for the interest of the public, Lord, bless each and every one of them and grant them your strength and your protection as they serve for the others, taking the risk in this time of COVID-19 pandemic. Lord, we at this moment pray for our brothers and sisters 
all those who are celebrating their birthday today lord we thank you for you have enabled them to celebrate their birthday lord we thank you for your mercies and your kindness that you have showered upon them lord grant that they may live their life in gratitude for all that you have done until this moment and that they may share love with others as they have been loved by you and by many others father continue to take care of these your children and let this day be a day of, day of praise to you and happiness to them as you have promised in your scripture by you let their days will be multiplied and years will be added and grant many and happy years to your servants that they may spend all their lives so as to please you lord we also pray for the couples those who are going to be united in marriage lord we thank you for you have created them in this world brought them until this moment with your providence and guidance lord we thank you for the good health and strength wisdom and knowledge and the job opportunities that you have granted unto them above all lord we thank you for you have enabled them to understand your eternal plan that they should be united together as husband and wife lord as they prepare themselves for this holy and sacred union infuse their children with your holy spirit so that they may be united as husband and wife and create a beautiful witnessing christian home on this earth we also pray for their parents and all other family members all those who are engaged themselves in order to do various arrangements for the wedding lord bless them all with your guidance and counsel so that they may able to accomplish everything in an excellent way lord we also bring before you all those who are celebrating their wedding anniversary lord we thank you for you have united them in the bond of love we thank you that you have given them another year of life together lord we thank you for your son jesus christ our savior who has sustained them through the times of joy scares and anxieties lord spare them to each other to go on walking the way of life together and grant that for them it may be true the best day to come lord as they remember the solemn promises that they made before you and before your people on their wedding day lord strengthen their covenant relationship as they renew their promises grant them grace to grow together still deeper in love the new year comes to them with greater responsibilities lord let them rededicate their lives at the feet of jesus christ your son and the lord of our homes lord we also pray for thy servant mrs elizabeth balasundaram who has entered into your glory lord we thank you for the life that she lived with us on this earth we thank you lord for you have given her as a great gift in our church in our society and in our family lord we thank you we praise you for all the good things that we received through our life as a family as a church and as a society lord now the time has come you have elevated her into your glory lord we thank you for this glorification that you have granted unto her lord we thank you for you have enabled her to stand before you robing in white holding the palm branches in her hand always praising you lord we thank you for you have redeemed her from our pains and sufferings lord we thank you for all that you have done unto her we also pray for the family members the children of the family and the brothers and sisters and all other relatives kith and kins the friends lord as they are in pain and agony we pray to you so that you pour your heavenly peace unto their hearts so that they may able to come out of this pain and agony lord we also as we pray as we pray the independence day of our nation lord we pray to you who liberates the whole creation from every bondage help us to keep the freedom that you have gifted to our nation and enable us to experience and extend the true sense of freedom justice and liberty to all who live in our country 
mighty God, lead, lead our nation in the path of righteousness and peace. Lord, guide our rulers and those who bear authority in the affairs of the people of our nation with your pure and peaceable wisdom, especially the President of Indian Republic, the Prime Minister, the Governor and the Chief Minister of our state and all those who serve in the governments that we and all people may be godly and quietly governed by them. Guide their policies by the light of your life-giving spirit that our country may go forward in justice and liberty, peace and prosperity as we celebrate our Independence Day. Lord, we also pray for our church members, all those who are worshipping with us, being in various places, Lord, we pray for them. You be with them and bless them with your grace, with your compassion. Grant them all good health and strength. Protect them from any disease and any kind of danger. Lord, we also pray for all those who are in need of our prayers. Lord, bless them all with your grace, with your compassion. We commit ourselves and everything into your mighty hand for your continuous guidance, protections, and blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, let us all sing the hymn number 355. Hymn number 355. I vow to thee, my country. And to God's gracious mercy and protection we commit you. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.